Well, welcome to this week's episode of The Holy Post. Come on in, everybody. This is not as scary of a place as you might think it would be. We're here in our nice confessional. Isn't this? It's so cozy, you know? Just come on in and have a little seat. And look at how nice this is, you know? You can go right here and you can go behind the screen and you're completely anonymous. Or... You can just sit face to face and here we are. And it's just like a little conversation, having a you know little chat and essentially I'm here uh, or Father Joseph or whichever priest representing Jesus and allowing you to hear the words and I absolve you from your sins. My friends, I can't tell you how powerful those words are. And so for those of you who like have not been to confession, in forever, this is the time. And I can't tell you how powerful it is. And as somebody who goes uh, at least once a month, um, I'm a living testament and witness to the power and the freedom and the grace that comes from the sacrament. And it really affirms that Jesus Christ loves us, that he forgives us, but then he also, in confession, gives us the strength to do better. And so that's why, frankly, we are offering a ton of confessions because this is where it, it all turns around for a parish and for individuals. And if it turns around for an individual, it's going to turn around for the parish. Because again, when we look at confession, it makes us realize that we need Christ. Without confession, we kind of think, well, I can do this on my own. Wrong. Doesn't work. Confession makes us realize we need a Savior. We need Jesus Christ. And he's the one that can forgive us. And so this is awesome. Like every weekday, Monday to Friday, we are adding a half an hour of confessions before the, the 8 a.m. Mass. So 7.30 a.m., sneak in, stop in before work, whatever, go to confession. We're still going to do it uh, on Fridays after Mass uh, for half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on how long it takes. And on Saturdays from 3.30 until 4.45. Um, but then we've also added this Thursday night thing. It, it it was so powerful last week. And so every Thursday night from 5.30 to 6.30, we have confessions and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here in the church. Really awesome. So you can stop in for five minutes, an hour, whatever you want to do, pray to the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament, go to confession, and then 6.30 Mass. So I really invite you to confession, especially this Lent. Um, we, we're going to have a penance, uh, parish penance service coming up the end of March. I mean, again, a day of grace. If you can't find time to go to confession, I, something's wrong. Okay? But this is it's just a nice little space. And um, again, I just kind of, it's, it's just very peaceful. So anyway, now we got something else to talk about. Let's go through this door here. Okay. This is going to be fun. Come on out. Here we go. Now, we are having a great problem here at St. Joe's. A great problem, but nonetheless, it's still a problem. We're running out of space. You know, we've, uh, Pauline Glaza made these wonderful little pew ropes. I mean, these are just beautiful and gorgeous. And, you know, the, the thing was, we said, well, we're going to go down to half capacity. But because of these, we're down to about a, a third of the capacity because people only sit maybe two or three or four in a pew that's made for eight. So we're down to you know, around 200 people that we can fit in a 600 person church. We got a lot of people coming back. That's awesome. We need space. We need space. And so we've brainstormed, we've prayed, we've talked to uh, doctors and nurses, we've talked to our various ministry groups, we've talked to advisory councils. Oh, we've talked to a lot of people because uh, the one thing I've really tried to do with COVID is to make the best decision possible with all the information I have, uh, with all the consultative groups that I consult and, and we do our best. And I can't say it's been hundred percent right, but I don't know, nobody's that. So we're doing our best with this to make sure people are safe, comfortable, and are here to worship. Here's the thing. I cannot and won't turn anyone away from mass. Like in my conscience, I can't do that. So people are now getting vaccinated. The numbers are down. Uh, people are feeling safer. So more people are coming to mass. On Ash Wednesday, I had about 10 people say, this is my first time back to mass. That's awesome. 
but now we need a place to put them um, because I don't want people to stop coming to Mass because they feel like there's nowhere to go. So what we're looking to do is the week of March 6th and 7th, that weekend, we're going to start removing some of these. Not all of them. Don't, don't freak out on me. Don't freak out. We're going to remove some of these, okay? So that we get the church up to about 50% capacity, which is where the governor wants it to be. And what's going to happen, you're going to see these, they're going to be, we're going to call them family and friend zones. I thought that was kind of a, a clever little thing to call them. And what will happen is in that front section up there in front of the Blessed Virgin Mary, back in this back section over here on the Sacred Heart side, and then in the middle section of the balcony, that will be family and friend zones, meaning these pew ropes will be removed and people who are family and friends who are already gathering together, who are comfortable with that, who have been vaccinated, who have maybe already had the, uh, the virus, uh, who are willing to wear a mask because it'll be closer together, they can sit together. They can sit together and that'll fit more people in the church. Uh, it'll keep families together. It'll keep friend groups together. Think of it kind of as pods. But for those who still want to remain cautious, I get it and I respect it. And so the bulk of the church will still have these pew ropes on the pews, every other pew. And you can certainly sit there. The other thing is, don't forget, people are still dispensed for mass uh, for those who really need to be cautious. We want you to be cautious. We also have our 915 on Sunday mass, the mass of max protection. Uh, so we still have that. I've been all about giving people options because I respect people's opinions. And so we're trying to give people options while still being safe and still uh, doing what, uh, what we are asked. So that's the week of March 6th and 7th. And then we're going to keep reevaluating. That's what we're going to keep on doing. That's what our parish staff has been doing this whole past year. Can you believe it's been a year? Reevaluating. What can we do better? How can we do this better? We want you to feel safe in coming back. Um, especially those, you know, if you're out, um, if you're going to the grocery store and you're going to restaurants and all that, but you're not coming to church yet, time to come back. Time to come back. Because we've been to church for over 29 weeks and have not had one known outbreak of COVID here at St. Joe's. And in fact, in the Catholic churches in this area, I don't know of any outbreaks that have happened because of mass attendance. Mass is extremely safe, and we've been doing it well and remaining safe. We still ask people to respect the governor's mask mandate. We're still having, we're, we should have bought stock in uh, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, but we didn't. Um, we're still going to have that all around. We're still going to be spraying in between masses. Uh, again, we're still going to be extremely safe. But for those who are already together, we're okay with you sitting together. Uh, and so, again, I appreciate your understanding about this, and it's a great problem to have. We have people who want the Eucharist. We, want, we have people who want to come back to church. And I want to make sure that you got a place to come and that you have a seat uh, to, to be able to fill. And so, again, uh, thank you for your prayers, your understanding. Uh, and we are excited for this, especially as we get ready for Easter and all those good things and those wonderful celebrations that remind us that Christ is still very much uh, in charge of everything and that he continues to uh, give us life and grace and hope and peace. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you this weekend at Mass. And may Almighty God bless you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.